Here we'll establish a nice inequality that was part of the 1989 Spanish National Math Olympiad. And one thing that I really like about this problem is that I think it was motivated by a very famous identity in mathematics, which we'll talk about after we state the problem. So our goal is to show that 1 over 10 times the square root of 2 is less than 1 half times 3 quarters times 5 sixths all the way up to 99 over 100, which in turn is less than 1 over 10. So that means we have two things to prove. We have this inequality on the left as well as this inequality on the right. And the fact that this inequality on the left includes a square root of 2 gives us some motivation that we should maybe be looking at the square of this inequality. Okay, and then that being said, if we look at the square of this thing in the middle, we'll notice that we've got a finite version of a very famous identity known as the Wallace product. Another thing that's important about this Wallace product is that although all of the terms in the numerator and the denominator are squared, it's often written in an offset manner. And that gives you a hint onto the solution strategy for this. So I think being knowledgeable about this Wallace product will really give you a hint towards how to solve this inequality or how to produce this inequality. Okay, let's recall what this Wallace product is. It says that 2 over 1 times 2 over 3 times 4 over 3 times 4 over 5 times 6 over 5 times 6 over 7, so on and so forth. An infinite product is equal to pi over 2. And like I said, traditionally the numbers are grouped as follows. So notice here we've got 2 squared over 1 times 3, 4 squared over 3 times 5. So the even numbers are grouped and the odd numbers are not grouped together, but they're associated as follows. Again, that's going to give us a hint. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So the first thing that we'll focus on is this right inequality. So let's maybe write that down. So first, we'll look at the right inequality, which means we want to show that 1 half times 3 quarters times 5 sixths ending at 99 over 100 is less than 1 over 10. Okay, so now from here what I'd like to do is maybe square both sides and also clear denominators so that we're working with something within the natural numbers. Okay, so doing that gives me the following equivalent inequality. So I'll just do some arithmetic operations on inequalities to produce equivalent inequalities until we get down to one that's kind of obviously true. That'll be our strategy for writing this out. Okay, so like I said, squaring and then moving everything over there or clearing denominators gives us the following object. So we've got 1 squared times 3 squared times 5 squared all the way up to 99 squared times a single hundred. That comes from multiplying this up will be less than 2 squared times 4 squared times 6 squared all the way up to 100 squared. Of course, we haven't established this yet. This is what we want to end up showing, which is equivalent to kind of the right hand of our goal inequality. Okay, next we're going to take some inspiration from the standard way of writing the Wallace product and take one of these groups, either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, and reassociate so that we don't have squares, but we have it written slightly differently. Okay, and there's a little bit of a choice here, whether we do this to the left or the right. I would say maybe just try both, and whichever one leads you to a kind of clear argument is best. In this case, it's going to be best to do it with the left-hand side. So I'm going to maybe take one of the ones from 1 squared and just throw it away because it's that multiplicative identity. Then we can write this as 1 times 3, 3 times 5, 5 times 7, all the way up to 97 times 99, and then 99 times 100. Okay, so like I said, I've rewritten the left-hand side like that. Now, I'll just rewrite the right-hand side as is. So we want to show that this is less than 2 squared times 4 squared times 6 squared, all the way up to 100 squared. 
But now we're going to notice that 100 squared is most definitely bigger than 99 times 100 because 100 is bigger than 99. So I'll just put a check mark over that because that's kind of obvious. There's nothing really to do there. And then furthermore, just by looking at the numbers, it's easy to see that one times three is less than two times two because three is less than four. Furthermore, three times five, which is 15, is less than four times four, or four squared, which is 16. And five times seven, which is equal to 35 is less than six times six, which is equal to 36. But what we'd like is some general version of all of these. So need a general version of, so let's maybe color code these. We have the purple underlying stuff, the orange underlying stuff, and the pink underlying stuff. Okay, and if we can prove a general version of the inequality that's exhibited by those three underlines, then we have established this inequality, thus this inequality, and thus this inequality, which is the right-hand side of our goal. Okay, well, let's look at this carefully. Well, let's notice that over here we've got a number, a number plus two, so three, 3 plus 2, which is less than 3 plus 1 quantity squared. Here we have 5, 5 plus 2, 5 plus 1 quantity squared. So in general, what we want to show to finish this off is that n times n plus 2 is less than n plus 1 quantity squared. So like I said, this is going to be the n equals 1 case right here, n equals 3 case right here, n equals 5 case right here, all the way up to this one right here, which is the n equals 97 case, which would be paired over here with 98 squared. But this is a pretty easy inequality to show is true. We can just multiply out both sides and we'll say that this is equivalent to n squared plus 2n is less than n squared plus 2n plus 1. There are lots of common terms there, and breaking it all down, this is equivalent to saying that 0 is less than 1, because we can cancel this n squared plus 2n from both sides. Okay, so now we can read from the top. The inequality that 0 is less than 1 is equivalent to the inequality that n squared plus 2n is less than n squared plus 2n plus 1, which is equivalent to the factored form of that. But the factored form of that proves that all of these underlying terms, including the last one, which isn't, a which isn't written over here, um, are the kind of correct inequality. Furthermore, this red under and overlying term is clearly the correct inequality. But that implies this, which implies this, which is the right-hand side of our goal. Okay, so we're good with the right-hand side. Now let's get rid of this and we'll quickly go over the left-hand side. So we just established the right-hand side of our goal inequality. Now we're ready to look at the left-hand side of our goal inequality, which I've written up here. We're going to use the same strategy as we did before, taking inspiration from the Wallace product and the associativity within the Wallace product. Okay, first thing that I'll do is square both sides and then clear denominators. So that tells me that our necessary inequality is equivalent to 2 squared times 4 squared times 6 squared all the way up to 98 squared times 100 squared is less than, let's see, 1 squared times 3 squared all the way up to 99 squared times 100 times 2. So I'll write that as 2 times 100. That's the square root of 2 squared times 10 squared. Okay, but now let's notice that we can do a little bit of simplification. We can maybe take this 100 and change it from a square to a first power by canceling this out. And then furthermore, we can take this 2 and change it from a square to a first power by canceling this out. So now we only have a single 2 here. 
but everything is squared over here. But the fact that we have a single two here sets up the same kind of argument that we had before. Before we were able to throw out a one because it was a multiplicative identity, but here we've set up the same kind of thing. Okay, so this is equivalent to two times four times four times six times six times eight ending at 98 times 100. Again, we only have a single 100, so we don't have to worry about the other one. After that cancellation, obviously, right before this is a 96 times 98. So that's equivalent to this being less than three squared times five squared up to 99 squared, where I use the fact that one is the multiplicative identity again. But now we have exactly the same sort of thing again. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8, which is clearly less than 3 squared, which is equal to 9. And then 4 times 6 is equal to 24, which is clearly less than 5 squared, which is equal to 25. And then finally over here, 98 times 100 is less than 99 squared. But all of these guys right here have the same form that we had before. Notice if n is equal to 2, n plus 2 is equal to 4, and n plus 1 is equal to 3. So all of these hold in general, so I'll just say hold in general. And what I mean is all of these underlying inequalities hold in general, again, because n times n plus 2 is less than n plus 1 squared, which we showed on the last board. Here, n is equal to 2 for the red underline, n is equal to 4 for the green underline, all the way up here, n is equal to 98 for the purple underline. So that means this inequality is true, means this inequality is true, which means this inequality is true, but this top inequality is our left-hand inequality, which was the last thing to establish to finish this problem off. And that's a good place to stop.